Hi friends, welcome back to Really Famous. I'm Kara, and today we are hanging out with Daisy Fuentes. So Daisy has a fascinating history, both professionally and personally. She jumped onto the entertainment scene in the late 80s when she was in MTV VJ after launching her career on Telemundo. She was also a model and she's been a TV host and she's been running her own company and brand called Daisy Fuentes Style for 20 years. Daisy is a total rock star if you ask me. Speaking of a rock star, she's married to one. It's Richard Marks. And that's a cool story in and of itself. You can hear it on my first podcast with Daisy, which ran a few years ago on Really Famous. I put a link to that in today's show notes if you want to give it a listen. So personally, Daisy was born in Cuba and then she lived in Madrid with her family for part of her childhood and she eventually landed in New Jersey. And that's one of the things that Daisy and I first bonded over, our New Jersey roots. So being that I just moved to Los Angeles, I figured I'd give Daisy a ring. And then I went over to her house and we talked and talked and talked and decided to tape a podcast. And that's what you're about to hear. Fun side note, when I drove up to her house, she noticed my New Jersey license plates and was all, oh my God, you still have your New Jersey plates. And I did. But it was the last time I rolled up to anyone's house with those plates. Two days later, I became official and swapped them out for California plates. All right, about our talk. Let me just tell you the topics we cover here in this talk. They're major. Investments, real estate, money, designer goods, aging, facelifts, regrets, my inner thoughts as a therapist, clapping back at people, paring down your life to only the good people, and so much more. I mean, we cover a lot, including a super honest conversation about aging. I mean, it's probably like none you've ever heard before. Super candid from both of us. And we also talk a little bit about Richard Marks. My point is that this is a full on two friends hanging out and being totally candid and hitting every topic in the book. I love a talk like this, and I think you will too. So we will get to that in just a second after a word from our sponsors. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Hello, Daisy. Oh, Cara. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back with my Jersey friend. I'm so happy to see you. And now that you're practically a neighbor, a California girl, Finally. And another Jersey girl bites the dust. Oh, well, ah. you can take the girl out of Jersey. That is but true. We are, we will always be Jersey That's girls. That's true. That's true. All right. So thank you for doing a podcast. I know you are <laughs> constantly invited to do podcasts. Everybody has a podcast these days. What's that about? I, I guess it's just, um, I, I thought they were going to be over, but they have only uh, gotten bigger. And I think it's just become part of our life now, right? Yeah. That it's just what we do when we're out walking or exercising or driving in the car. It's become kind of like the new talk radio, you mm -hmm. know, and I kind of like it. I enjoy listening to podcasts. Sometimes I don't so much enjoy doing all the podcasts. <laughs> because Sheer people, honesty. Yeah, because people will, will hear it and be like, oh, yeah, you're just sitting down and talking. But now there's video all the time. Right. And so it's like going to do a TV show. <laughs> it is. Well, that's how I feel on my end, too. If it's yeah. any consolation, it's like I used to just take a little voice recorder yeah. and a couple of lavalier right. mics. And that was that. But yeah. now it's like, OK, are the cameras charged? And is there going to be enough lighting? And what are the angles? And is there enough battery? Like, it's really yeah. too much. Why do we all have these TV shows, basically? And it's kind of easier for the men because have you seen what they look like? Like, they literally roll out of bed into a podcast. Yeah. And nobody seems to care. Yeah. Also, by the way, like, everybody is now growing out their facial hair to the extreme. <laughs> Not just their facial hair, but they're also growing out their hair hair. And the pandemic is long over. Yes. I mean, it's not, but some it things is. Have, some things are here to stay. Right. But it, it does bother me that, you know, for us, if we were to show up the way men show up uh -huh. to podcasts, we would get really kind of criticized, I mm -hmm. think. Not that we care. But we would because we're just expected to be a little bit more put together, you know, and I have gotten progressively less 
concerned with that where I'm doing like less hair and makeup and it's more casual. Mm -hmm. But but people really do, you know, if you don't do any makeup, then people, oh, look at her. She didn't even bother to put any makeup. She looks like really, she looks like crap. Or if you get too done up and it's like, oh, well, you're too done up. Why are you so done up for a podcast that's so not natural? And men can literally just roll up with like a, with out of the hamper and it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was taping something recently with somebody who came in basically like off the basketball court is what it looked like. And so I had all my cameras set up and he was just like, okay, just make sure you only get me from here up. <laughs> so for him, we adjusted the cameras yeah. or whatever. And then I realized after when I looked at the footage that it was like the worst camera angle ever. And I'm like, okay, <gasps> this is not ideal either. Yeah. You can't it is what it is. Almost. It is what it is, exactly. All right, so you listen to podcasts when you are walking in the morning, correct? Yes. Do you, what do you listen to? Um, my favorite one uh, right now is the uh, Julia. Really famous? Yeah. Yes, that's definitely one, but that's been one for a long time. But one of the newer ones that I've really been following is uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been listening to that one. Um, and, her, and it's called uh, Smarter Than Me. Yeah, Wiser Than, wiser than, wiser than, wiser than, than Me. Wiser Than Me, yeah. And I just love the theme of it. I love that she's giving a platform to women that who society basically forgot about. Women who are older, mm -hmm. who have a great history, who have accomplished a lot. And it's really not just about what they've accomplished in their career, but really what they have learned as, as women, as humans in their older wiser age yes it's and brilliant it is brilliant and it's such it's it, just the right concept because it is like you can teach me from whatever your life has been whatever you've learned because as we were talking about before in your kitchen like we evolve constantly yes. and like every year we learn new things about ourselves and we are constantly changing and growing so you know when you the older you get the more wisdom you have brilliant to actually tap into that and I love Julia Louis-Dreyfus too she's really good at this yeah you know it's not an easy thing to do to be able to uh, have a conversation interview someone mm -hmm. and be uh, naturally curious mm -hmm. which I she makes me feel like she is she's For very sure. good at it I don't think she I don't think she's putting it on like she I wouldn't be able so. to do it if she wasn't really yeah authentically curious about yeah. people and there's so much to ask like you sit down with mm -hmm. Jane Fonda and it's like of course <sighs> you have a million things to ask her but not just Jane Fonda like anybody who she's had on as guests so I do like that one too love the concept and I always I enjoy sitting down with people who are a lot older also so I don't know about you but for me that's yes. fun yeah and like I've interviewed some icons and I love that I'm always like I'm trying to interview the icon too. Well, they have so much to say and there is so much to learn from other people's experiences and other people's life lessons. Yep. There is so much to learn. Even if you can't really relate to their life, mm -hmm. there's always something that you can relate to in the lesson, in the experiences that they have. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I think we all have much more in common than we think, especially women. Absolutely. And we can learn from each other. And I think also women are really good at pumping each other up too and like helping each other feel like everything is good, they're good, yeah. life is okay. Well, yes and no. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think I think when it comes to what we're doing, what we really want to share when we're a little bit more open, when we really pay attention, when we've done the work on ourselves mm -hmm. and we're surrounded by other uh, inspirational women yes but there's still a lot of women who like to tear each other down and I'm not about that and I see it a lot especially in social media okay so I see it a lot like and, you see and it, it really with... bothers me because I think that women were and we still are it, even if it's subconsciously we are basically raised to compete with each other and that's something that I think as a society we have to continue to break down. It's gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. But I still see it with women my age who like to just tear me down on social media. Oh, so you mean people commenting on yes, your stuff? Yes, it's always a woman. It's always a woman who has some shit to say about how I look, who I think I am, what I'm wearing, whether... Just really catty, bitchy, 
unacceptable shit. And I and people say, well, why do you engage? Well, that's why we're on social media to engage. Uh -huh. And yes, I always respond mostly to all the good, positive comments. I like to engage with those, but every now and then, that shit has to be called out. Yeah. And I don't care. I'll call it out. Well, you're Jersey. I don't care. It's not okay. Right. Yeah. And, okay. And that's good. Because yeah. why, does, why should everybody feel like they can just say whatever they want just because there's no accountability right. there? So, okay, a little accountability, maybe not the worst thing. Right. But of course, I also wonder if they, if they get a reaction out of you. Yeah. That's almost they get a little something out of that. Like, sure. ooh, Daisy is like actually talking to me or whatever. And that's okay, as long as they also get the message. Uh-huh. I don't care what their motivation to be bitchy is or, you know, what kind of rise they get out of me or whether they're, the message should still come across mm -hmm. of what I'm trying to say. I don't, I don't really care. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Know? Yeah, so on the opposite side, do you ever have people who are kind of stalkerish? I mean, I don't, not that I'm aware of. I, I think I have curated my social media to a point where I'm really um, engaging with some cool people because okay. I probably have as many blocked people as I have people following me. Okay. So and, you block them right oh, away. Oh, yeah. I don't want my social media to be a place of, of ugliness. Mm -hmm. So those people who just, um, who, who don't get it, are, I don't want them on my, like, you, you don't get the privilege of being a part of that community. Mm -hmm. And again, people are like, oh, why do you worry about it? Because that's, uh, that's what it's about. You know, I want to curate. I want to have a, a space where... I can communicate with, with people, get to know people. And, and the truth is, I have connected with some amazing people and organizations. There are people who have become, you know, acquaintances. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are organizations that I'm now very organically connected with and work with. And that's what I think the positive side of social media is. And you block all the nonsense. You get rid of it. Why do you even want it on there? Why do you want that noise and the negativity there? I, I don't want it. Uh -huh. It's kind of like what we should be doing in our life. And right? do you feel like you have done that in your life too? Yes. How? Um, you distance yourself from the nonsense uh -huh. and from people who just don't make you feel good, from people who you know are a little toxic, people who are not your tribe people who suck the energy out of you. Mm -hmm. You just distance yourself from those people a little bit and you create a community of people who support each mm -hmm. other, who are like-minded, who can teach you things, who uh, you can have a laugh with, who you can really enjoy life with. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that that's something that when you, like, you're in your 20s or something, yeah. you just like kind of let everybody in. Yes. And you just put up with everybody and you think that you should, should is always the word, be friends with or whatever, whoever, but then you start to filter it out a little bit and curate a little bit more and you don't have to put up with it. Sometimes, especially if it's work related or maybe family related yeah. to a certain degree, yeah. but that is one of the nice things about as you, as you get more wisdom, yeah. you can do more things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, okay. So, so in terms of social media, you're, you're, you basically do it mostly yourself. So like you don't have somebody else going in there and yeah, no, I have some help with my fashion page. Okay. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I'm, it's me. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. So your fashion page. So somebody else that helps you with that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your brand a little bit now. So you've had it for a long time. Yeah, we're going on 20 years. That's huge. Congrats. I'm so proud of that. Thank you. You should be. So you started it 20 years ago. Why? Uh, it was basically an opportunity that came my way. And I didn't know anything about it. I mean, you, if you go back 20 years, branding was really the Wild West. We didn't really know what to expect. We didn't know what it should look like, what it should be like. And... I was a TV personality at that time, but I was also modeling and I thought, well, this is what I kind of do for other people anyway. Mm -hmm. Why not um, learn about it and, and, and have a chance to have a hobby in fashion, which I felt was, you know, my second love at that time. I, I was coming off of House of Style and MTV, uh -huh. so I felt like I had a little bit of an insider a little bit more access 
to designers and fashion and trends and the best stylists and I felt really comfortable in that world and I thought this was like a little extension of that. I sure. thought it was gonna be a little side hobby which really no. turned into a full blown business. It's amazing. I think I was telling you before, last time I think I was at your place, you were having, you had some sort of photo shoot going on. Right. And there were like boxes of clothes that were arriving. It was very exciting. Yeah, it is very exciting. And I love it. Like that's really great to be able to create that. So you've had such a, like a wide variety of things going on. And yeah. it's so cool that 20 years later, here you are. So look, what are some of the things that you are involved with day to day for that now. So like, does that take up a lot of your time and what do you do? Not so much anymore because it is on a roll and I have, I'm surrounded by great teams. Uh -huh. So I have um, designers who I work with and manufacturers who I work with in uh -huh. every category. And yes, I am very involved, but I'm not a designer by trade. Right. So I work with the designers and you know, the, the DNA of the brand is already so set in that it has become easier. It's really just about planning for the future and making okay. sure that everything is on track. And for me, it's really a, still about growing the brands and seeing what categories can I bring in that makes sense? What, what other you know, manufacturers do I wanna get involved with? So it's a little bit more of like, yes, a little bit of a business, a business side of stuff, it. Right. You know? and, and I love the creative part of it. That's kind of, on a roll. Yeah, yeah. So are you into clothes like generally? Are you into style and fashion or not I am, so much? not as much as I used to be. Uh, how, so how has that changed and why do you think? Because I don't care so much anymore because I realize that uh, I don't want to become uh, an ad for other designers. And I also don't believe in, in spending so much money on on fashion that you're just going to end up you know not wearing uh -huh. or, or throwing it's going to be done by next season um i'm more about the basics right now about what i feel comfortable in i'm not going to events as much as i used to so i don't have to have all the fancy clothes um anymore i just really want to feel comfortable in my own life i, I want to look put together but I'm not as concerned with what vibe I'm giving off anymore, or like whether I'm wearing the latest handbag or whether I'm mm -hmm. wearing the latest um, designer, or I, I don't care about that anymore. Yeah, so that's again, it's something you've just shaken off. Like, yeah. this is not adding to my life at all. It's not necessary, and I can right. pare that down. When it, you know, I, I'm much more interested these days in investing my money the right way. I, I am pretty much semi-retired or retired, you know? I mean, not that I wouldn't do a TV show if a good thing came my way, but I'm not actively looking to be on television or to be doing what I used to do. I feel like I'm retired, other than the brand. So I'm more interested in investing my money wisely. I'm more interested in doing the right thing with my money. And, you know, spending $3,000 on a handbag is mm -hmm. not smart. Right. You know, and honestly, not that I can't afford it. I don't, I don't, it's not smart. Uh -huh. I don't need that, like to prove what to who. Still, if I see something that I really covet and I don't covet anything these days, I've never been an acquisitions kind of girl. If I covet something, yes, I, you know, but I like to live in a nice place. Mm -hmm. That's where I put my money into my home, into travel with my family, into experiences. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm always open to learning about new investments and, and you know, how to, how to grow your money. That to me is much more interesting right, right, than wearing the, la that. the latest handbag yeah, these yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. So know. let's talk about that. Yeah, that is interesting to me too. Yeah. So, so are you always looking for interesting investments? Yes. Or like you are. So you're just like your eyes are kind of... I, I'm aware. I'm open to learning about uh, different areas of investing. I, I don't... I don't quite understand um, like the whole stocks and the financial, um, th that part of it, stocks and bonds that are just, it's a little boring to me. Uh -huh. I love real estate. I love um, learning about how money works. I love learning about taxes. Um, I love learning about how to do the right thing so that I 
can get the perks and the savings in taxes that we all should know about. These things are not taught. Okay, and like what? Is, uh, you know, for example, if, you, if you're gonna get a house and flip it, mm -hmm. the fact that there are certain things that you need to do so that you don't have the capital gains taxes that you would if you weren't aware of some of the things that nobody teaches you. Um, you know, renting a, a, a house out and then selling it and then getting a loan against that gain that you just made. It's hard to explain it all, but these are all like, you can, you can actually research all this uh -huh. about how to save on taxes when you have capital gains from a real estate sale. So flipping a house is not as simple as flipping a house because you can also, yes, you, you, you have some gains, but you can also lose a lot of money in taxes if you don't understand the right thing to do and the things that you need to do prior to selling that house and getting that um, uh, the earnings that you just made right. from that flipping. And these are things that are not taught. These are things that you have to seek out. Yeah, you have to research it your own. You your have own. to research and you have to understand and have somebody explain it to you because there are a lot of little things that can be missed. Um, I don't understand why money isn't taught in school. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, I think that a lot of people don't understand how finance and how money works in life, how taxes work. I think that people don't understand how mortgages and how banks work, you know, loans. It's not what my parents were taught. And that's what they taught me. Mm. And I've had to unlearn some of the things that I've been taught because it's, it's not accurate. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, my kids had, at the old school they were in, they did have a class called financial literacy Yeah. that every kid had to take. So, and do you feel like it was accurate? Like um, it taught, like it helped them? Well, I mean, because it, it's basically current. It was like a year ago that they, would, they were taking ah. it. So it's new-ish. I don't know how long they were teaching that. But yeah, I mean, I remember them bringing things to us and we would have to explain them a little bit more, like in depth. But it was interesting that they were learning these concepts that we were never taught. And why would we know them? Like what? Like, uh, any, like you're saying, mortgages, banks, how does it all work? Um, I don't know about taxes if that came up, but the, you know, a lot with the banking industry. So interestingly, my husband and I both went to business school. So I, I think I told you I have an accounting degree. Which you're, is you here. have a lot of degrees. You're really <laughs> kind of like brilliant. <laughs> I would not say yes, not you word. are. Every time I talk to you, I learn something new about you. And I love that about you. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. So would you believe that I have an accounting degree? Yes. It's a little weird. Yeah. Okay, you believe it. I believe it because okay. you're brilliant. Okay, okay. Thank you. So the so I'm not using it necessarily, that degree where I am today, but it is totally all the things yeah. are in my brain huh. and useful. And I feel like that would help everybody to have that information. And like I do remember there are a few things that I was taught in business school. And of course, one of them is buy low, sell high. But it's like sometimes when the market is doing really bad, like it has been recently, mm -hmm. it can be scary. But at the same time, it's like you just have to remember, you can't just back out and pull it all out or you're going to lose all of your money. Of course. Because it's just on paper right now. So you're basically giving all of it up. If it's low, if the stock market has gone down, you don't want to necessarily sell everything. You want to kind of wait it out. So that's yeah. like one of the things. Yeah. The stock market is an area that doesn't interest me. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's because I don't quite fully understand it very well. well I, neither do I, and neither do plenty of people. But also, I don't have an interest in learning about I, I it. Get it. it. It's not interesting yeah. to me. So I leave that to, you know, my, I have a business manager who uh -huh. fills me in and explains things to me as best as he can. And it usually goes in one ear and out the other because I don't care. Right. Um, I, I mean, I care about the money, but I don't understand it. It's not interesting to me. So. I do, I, I feel like I am more invested in real estate because to me that's what I understand a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing that you're saying about, you know, buy low, sell high. high, I get that, but people kind of are applying that to real estate now too. And there's some okay. people who are saying, oh yes, you know, we really, there's, we really want to buy real estate, but the, the interest rates are so high right now that we're going to wait until, and I'm like, okay, but then the prices are going to go up and the right. inventory is going to be low. So buy now 
and either refinance later yes. or or make all that money back when you sell that house for, for more than it's actually worth. Right. So it's, and people don't really think about any of that, but that's easier for me to understand. Well, right, because also they hear it, they hear something like that and then it just sticks in their brain. They hear, mm -hmm. oh wait, interest rates are so high. Right. And so it's like they can't see beyond that if they don't really, they're not yeah. really thinking that much. And that makes sense too, because it, yeah. it is like, oh sure, well why would you want high rates? But a lot of people are sitting on their houses right now because they these low interest rates on their right. mortgages so it's like yeah. they don't want to leave so there's less inventory but it's actually a great time to sell also yeah. i am not a real estate agent but i'm into it too just yeah. like you and i just sold we just sold a house recently so it was like yeah i mean there are it's a good time to sell i would it probably is. say yeah but it's, it's also a good time to buy it's also a good time to buy like you're saying but he, like he, for me it's like I always know that if what I've done before is I've we've bought what I call dumps and then we fixed them. Yeah. And it was like there are big wins in that. That's Absolutely. a good thing to be able to do. Absolutely. But I'm also at the point right now where I'm like, I do not want to live in a dump anywhere. Like right. I want to just be able to get something yes. that's just like, you know, move in ready oh, and perfect. Yeah. The the work of fixing up a house is not my favorite thing. It's and it takes a long time and it's expensive. It's more expensive than you plan on it being. Always. But then if you're in it for a while it makes sense. Yeah. But at the same time you don't want to be stuck in it too long the flipping getting back to your flipping situation so one of those rules is that you should live in it for a while right yeah there's a certain amount of time mm -hmm. that you should be in a house that you're flipping in order for it for tax purposes right yeah okay yeah but also and i'm i don't know quite how to explain it but also it helps it then you rent it out for mm -hmm. a little while before you sell mm-hmm Mm -hmm. It's all about really um, not getting uh, killed with taxes. Right. It's really, and there are a number of things that can be done depending on your situation and depending on the gains that you're getting from that house. Mm -hmm. there, there are a number of things that can be done. It's all uh, very particular to that property and to the state you're in and to everything. But there are a number of things that I think people aren't taught that we don't really think about that we just... And, and we leave a lot of money on the table, mm, mm -hmm. or rather, give it away to the government. Right. When it's not sitting on the table, unfortunately, yeah. somebody's yeah. sweeping it over yes. to there. So there are things that everybody needs to learn about of how how it works, you know. And it's not it, you're working. It, the the government has set up these laws, and most of us don't know about it. Mm -hmm. that we we just don't know the fine print. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's good to know. So that's one of the things that you, so let's talk about evolving as we were talking about before. And some of the things that you have been more interested in lately, you just told me, yeah. and then what are some of the, um, well, let's go, let's go to wisdom. So what are mm. some of the, the life lessons or insights that you've had, I don't know, in the last, whatever, couple of years, five years? That I've spent too much time worrying about stupid shit. Okay. Um, that time goes by way too fast. And by the time you realize the things that truly matter, you know, most of your life is gone. Half of your life has passed you by. Uh, I wish I would have learned more from my 20s and 30s. I wish I would have uh, taken inventory at the end of every decade or more regularly through the years. I think that that's something that we only do when we get older. Uh -huh. And it's so important to, to, to learn at the end of every year, like what have I learned this year? What were my mistakes this last year? And what have I learned from it? And I never did any of that. I mean, in fairness, my 20s and 30s, went by so fast because I was working so much I didn't really have time to even stop and, and reflect on what my life was or what had been going on. And yet I see Richard's son who is uh, 31 and I've known him through his 20s and he's been very aware of all this stuff. I can talk to him about the things that I've learned now, and he's just 31. Uh -huh. And all through his 20s, he was doing all the same things that I'm doing now, and I've admired him so much for that. And his friends are kind of on board with that too, and that really didn't go on when I was in my 20s. We weren't 
aware of uh, life and spirituality and um, wellness mm -hmm. and how to create a life that that is really serving you rather than everybody else. Um, he's he's kind of he and his peers are growing up in a time where it's kind of the opposite of how we grew up. Where we were taught to hustle, 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 work, 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 so that you can retire and then live. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they're now trying to figure out how they can really enjoy their life, travel, learn about the world, and do the right thing with their money. Like I think they have so many more opportunities with working from home, and they have so many other ways of making money mm -hmm. than when we were young right and it's very nice to see how there how there are some some young people who really are doing it right mm -hmm. are doing it well so do you think that's a result of just it being a different era or is it partially because of like how richard raised them I think it's both. I think it's a little nature and nurture. I think social media has opened up the entire world to all of us. Mm -hmm. So that when you're 18 years old, you're seeing the entire world and how people are everywhere. If you are someone who's aware and someone who wants to learn about the world, mm -hmm. it's very accessible to you. So you can learn about all the opportunities that are in front of you, that every, the world is at your feet really in your 20s. And they're learning that, they're seeing that. So, you know, even, yes, a lot of young people are getting caught up in the wrong side of social media, but it's also helping a lot of people uh -huh. become aware of the world and how they wanna float around the world. Yeah, it really is like there's a flip side of everything. There's yeah. good and bad with all of the things. And yeah, it's good to see the good. That's absolutely true. Um, so backing up a little bit. So if you could change anything about how you grew up, mm. what, what would you change? I think I would try to become smarter earlier. I would try to take in what was happening to me. I would try to connect more with the people who I was with. I would pause it and slow it down a little bit because I don't remember a lot of it. Uh huh. It went by so fast and I was so caught up in just, you know, who I was supposed to be. And I, I was in a world where I had to be what I was hired to be. You know, I couldn't, yes, I was very much myself when I was at MTV. Mm -hmm. There were still a lot of rules and a lot of regulations and I was there to, to do a job. So I would have put a little bit more of myself into everything and I would have tried to figure out who that was. <laughs> right, well you were super young yeah. when that started and they were kind of telling you who you were. Yes. So they kind of created a bit of that, yes. your identity, based on what they were seeing was probably working well, even though it probably stemmed from your real yeah. self, it maybe was shaped a little bit. Absolutely, I was very aware that I was there to play a part and you know, what was it that they needed from me? The persona, the, the, the personality that kind of worked Mm -hmm. They would kind of tell me who what I was. What did they say? Well, like, do you, you know, remember things they said? Oh, because, you know, we love how you are so uh, bubbly and your energy is so amazing and we want more of that. Uh -huh. And it's like, okay. And now I kind of hear uh, up until, you know, the last job that I did on television, uh, you know, just more of that Daisy energy. And it's like, this is the Daisy energy uh -huh. now. I don't know what you think the Daisy energy is, <laughs> yes. but I'm giving you my energy. Take yes, it or leave it. <laughs> yes, right, right. That's reality. <laughs> like, the reality. This is Daisy, you hired me. And you, cause it's, you're always playing yourself. Yes. But you're not playing yourself. No, because it depends on, uh, I don't know what that, the last thing of me that person saw and that's what they want. Uh -huh. Like, what was I doing the last time you saw me on TV? 
and I'm speaking about producers and people who I'm working with, people who have hired me to run a show. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they're expecting me to be like. You know, they're not giving me a character. They just right. expect me to be the last thing that they saw me be. <laughs> That's very tricky. Yeah. Because, yeah. right, because it's not a character. It's exactly, but you also, you are different. I mean, you have a, you're a human. Yeah. So you you don't just have one. Of course. Mood yeah. where you show all of these things or whatever. Yeah. And that's why I like podcasts because you can really be yourself. Right. I think we talked about this the last time. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I know that when I'm hired as a presenter, as a host of a TV show, my job is to keep that show moving along. Uh -huh. I get what my job is there. It's not really to showcase me. It's I'm there to kind of move the show along and to work with the producers and, and to be entertaining. So, of course, I'm not going to be 100% me who I am. I have an agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to turn it up a little bit. Yeah, sure. But maybe you don't have to blast it, but maybe they want you to blast it. Yeah. So, or they were expecting that yeah. it was like to the right. nth degree or whatever. Like, listen, 56-year-old me is different than 30-year-old me. You're not going to get that girl now. <laughs> right, right. But that's interesting, right? So do they, but they do expect that, I guess. I don't know what they Because that was a long time ago that they were seeing that part of you, though, or that, that, side of you I guess you would say and that side of me I think is always going to be there yeah. I do have that energy in me because that is very much who I am mm -hmm. that that young 25 year old girl is still in here somewhere yeah yeah <laughs> and she yeah. comes out every now and then but do you wonder sometimes like if you hadn't been gotten those jobs and hadn't gotten that like the fame, the notoriety, whatever you want to call it, that your personality would have been a little bit different or like you would have Yes. You do. Like how? Oh, I've had a, I, I, I've had lessons taught to me from the world, from so many different people. I've had to learn to adjust. I, I ha, I've had to learn to read the room early on, and that's okay. a talent that many people don't have. <laughs> uh-huh. Unless you're in many different rooms with many different people. Okay. So I love that I got to learn that. I love that I was aware enough to, to learn to read the room so that I wouldn't make a fool of myself. Mm -hmm. it's, it, and it's not quite, you know, having to learn to fit in. It's about really reading the room. Like you behave differently in different rooms. And that is almost from within, right? Yeah. Like you learned it, but you weren't necessarily, you couldn't concretely describe how you would read a room, probably. You have to be very observant, and I think I've always been someone who observes and, and sees everything. I'm aware of everything, and I'm fascinated by people, mm -hmm. because I don't know if it was because I, I, I changed countries when I was little. Right. So just from, as a reminder, you went from Cuba. From Cuba to Spain to New Jersey. That's a, that's not, <laughs> wait, it's a different country, right? I was saying it's not a different country over here, but yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so from Havana to Madrid to New Jersey uh -huh. is a better way of saying it. <laughs> um, I've, I've had to, as a young kid going into a different school, you, you, do have to kind of look around and see that everybody, every, every city, every country, every state is different. There are different vibes and, and you kind of get what works from you from all of them. Mm -hmm. But some people float through the world just kind of being like, this is who I am and you all have to adjust to me. And that doesn't quite work. You, that's some, you, you struggle. You're like swimming up river the mm -hmm. whole time rather than flowing with it and putting your energy into that river but still flowing with it mm -hmm. and i learned from a very young age i i was curious about people and and what made everybody different and i feel like i got a little bit from everybody and not so much in terms of how i wanted to be or who i wanted to copy but more who i didn't want to be like and the things that i didn't want to do and wow, that person's not aware of how embarrassing they are right now or how they're doing that wrong or how insulting they're being to other people or how rude they are. So I learned about how I didn't want to be like. 
And from the people who really were doing it right, I learned the little things, their traits that mm -hmm. I admired and kind of tried to put that into my personality. Like, how can I, how can I make that my own? Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I learned very young from being around so many people and being thrown into a world that I was not familiar with. I'd never been, I'd never known anyone who was in the entertainment industry. Yeah, such so, because you like kind of accidentally got a little gig that led yeah. to a big gig. Right. Mm -hmm. So I learned really by just being observant. Mm -hmm. You were reading the room yeah. in the different countries. Yeah. The different, the, the countries were the rooms. That's how it started. And then it started when I was in rooms with people who I'd never been around. Mm -hmm. I was never around. Um, successful, wealthy um, people who were either famous or um, accomplished uh -huh. or I'd never been surrounded by so many different types of people and it's very easy for us to feel like oh we don't belong with those people yeah like, I don't belong here so that's where I learned to really observe people. And I learned very quickly that no matter how successful, how rich, how famous someone is, when you really do get to know them, we're all the same. Yeah. We all have the same insecurities. We all deal with the same bullshit out, you know, when, when you really get to the core of living, of life and the things that we have to deal with. They're sometimes, you know, more expensive problems, but mm -hmm. they're the same problems, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole world is based on insecurity. I'm convinced. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it, like you're saying, it does not matter what you have, who you are, how successful you are. It's so fascinating how insecure everybody is. Yeah. And that is like the common thread. So right. if only we could all see or know that, it helps you kind of deal a little bit better that, oh, everybody is insecure. Yeah. And including like the jerks who are whatever, yeah. whatever they're doing and not treating anybody well, like, yeah, that's out of fear and insecurity, most likely. One of the first things I learned, I was so concerned that people were going to become aware that I didn't belong in that room. I'm so young and inexperienced, mm -hmm. right? And I learned quickly that they are so concerned with their own insecurities and their own things that they didn't really care about me or anybody else. It's, it was all about them. How did you figure that out? <laughs> Getting to know people a little bit. And when, when, I, when I was able to gain a little bit of trust and confidence in some of these people who I thought were so out of my world, and I realized that they really just want to talk about themselves. Uh -huh. They really just want to talk about their insecurities or their successes or their bullshit. And that's really what they're concerned about. I could see it. You could see it when you walk into a room. Everybody kind of scopes everybody out, right. but they want to just make sure that you're like aware of them and that you think the right thing about them. Uh -huh. They're not, it's not because they're, they're, they want to judge you. It's they want to make sure that you're looking at them the right way. <laughs> right, right. That they're not being judged poorly by right. you. Right. You're very perceptive. <laughs> I, I like to observe people. Yeah, right. So you, but you not only observe, but you observe and analyze. Like you, yes. you figure it out, right? So you're watching, but you're not just like watching. Like, oh, I noticed this person does that, or this yeah. is what's going on. You're also going beneath the surface of like, well, why are they doing that? I never quite thought of it that way, mm -hmm. but I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. because that's so you have to add the the analytical angle to I it. I mean, I guess most observers do some of that. Like, I do think that being an observer by nature, like you are not just looking to pick up on things, but to really understand things and find patterns or reasons or whatever is beneath yeah. the surface. But all of this that you're saying that you've learned, like you don't just 
that you don't just learn it because you're watching things, you're watching and you're figuring out, you're analyzing. Yeah, I feel like, you know, you, there's so much to learn mm -hmm. in observing. And nobody like sat down and said to you, okay, Daisy, this is the reality of what's going on in this room because you were not, you were an outsider? No. Or there was nobody who ever came into the picture who gave you that insight? No. This is all self-learned, yeah. Yeah, yeah. self-taught. Oh, people don't do that. People don't sit down with somebody and, and try to, and I think even if they did, most young people don't listen to older people. Mm. Like I, I, when I talk to a lot of young friends and you know, the daughter, I, there are a couple of daughters of my friends who are now in their early twenties and I love hanging out with them because they just make me feel young and um, they're smart girls and they do want to hear advice, yeah. but they don't really take it. Okay. So, and I think that that's just at everybody in, in their twenties, you kind of, it, 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 it kind of gets into your head, but you don't really pay attention to it until you learn the lesson for yourself. And, and then you go, oh, that's what she was trying to yeah. tell me. Well, that's life. That's how yeah. it goes. <laughs> it's like they say youth is wasted on the young. It's for that reason, totally. too. It's like, yeah, totally. they don't. They just are not going to fully. Yeah. This is the beauty of aging. Yeah. Really? Well, is I don't that know that get... there is a beauty of aging. But really? Yes, I guess that must be it. Okay, so, so let's talk about that while we're at it. <laughs> no beauty of aging? You don't see it? I don't see it. Mm. No, no, no. So explain. It, we live in a youth-obsessed world, uh -huh. and it makes it really difficult mm -hmm. for women specifically. I mean, yes, I see it in men too, but women specifically, um, there's this... Um, pressure to just stay young and it's impossible everything is anti-aging everything is stay younger everything is like well what about just like you know looking good and staying healthy and and just looking your age yeah what is wrong with that what is wrong with looking really good at your age not looking younger you know this whole like oh 50 is the new that no it's not no, 50 is 50. Yes, we're looking better than we ever did at 50. Um, but the pressure and the, the misunderstanding of women and women in their 50s and mm -hmm. what we go through, it's a lot. And it's, I don't know, it's like we're not expected to age. And I think it's getting worse and worse because people are successfully looking younger and younger. Mm -hmm as they get older and older. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming a more impot, it's almost worse mm -hmm. because it's becoming an impossible target. And, and you know, looking better and better at your age is fine. Uh -huh. I'm all for that. I am all for anyone who wants to do whatever it is that they wanna do to look better, whether that involves, you know, getting a little Botox mm -hmm. or whether that involves getting a facelift. Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong with wanting to look good. But let's all understand that it's not going to make us look 20 years younger. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to look good. And if that makes you feel better, that's great. But there's still nothing wrong with being your age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and I feel like society is making everyone feel like that there's something wrong with aging, mm -hmm. like you're not supposed to do it. <laughs> but it's bizarre because it's nature that you're going to age. And like look, you're not supposed I, to, like there's something wrong with you for aging, yeah. and yet that is the most natural thing that there is. Right, it if is. you're lucky, that's what will happen. Right. Uh, otherwise, you're dead, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you know? But I, 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 look, I don't like that I don't look like myself. Uh -huh. I don't like that I, can, that I now look older, I am as vain as they come uh -huh. and I still want to look good. I want to do whatever I can to look good to myself, but I know that I'm not going to look like I'm 30. Right. And there's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look good. Look, if you can afford to do whatever it is that you want to do and you're not going overboard and looking like a crazy person, there's nothing wrong with any of that. But I, 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 I feel like a different person. I am a different person. I'm not trying to act like a 30 year old. Uh -huh. I couldn't even know I try because I know too much. Um, and I think that that's what a lot of times um, it, it's looked at negatively in society. Mm -hmm. 
especially in this country. I think that maybe other cultures are more embracing. Of, I, I think that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, you could even see it reflected in like films and whatnot and television mm -hmm. is that you always you've seen in other um, from other countries you've seen in other projects that like, yeah, these are real women at different ages. Mm -hmm. And it's not only somebody, a leading woman, let's say, or lead, whatever the role, I'm losing right. the term, but it's not just somebody who is either under 30 or looks 30. Yeah. You know, like you see the full spectrum and it's good. Yeah. But I, I'm with you though too, though. I have to say back, backing to uh, backing up to what you said before, which is like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look good. Right. So you want to have agency over that as yeah. well. So I understand too, like I don't like watching myself aging and I think it's because I don't like the look of it, but it's not because I feel like I shouldn't yeah. be the age that I am. Exactly. You know what I mean? So exactly. it is a very weird dynamic. It's like, yeah. oh, I really am not into this or that. And it is a result of aging. Mm -hmm. But I have no problem with my age. Like, I'm happy to be, like, I, again, this yeah. is, life is just kind of in many ways getting better and better because you release all these things that we were talking about that you yes. don't really, you don't need anymore or want. And right. you don't have to put up with them. Exactly. Exactly. Which is, so that is a beautiful thing. We're talking about beauty of a different, you know, yeah. in a different way. You know, and then there's a whole, there's a whole thing of like, oh, you're aging gracefully. What the hell is no, that? No, that's just, what is that? No. That's such bullshit. I agree. That is not a thing. You, you have just no age. control over that. So some people might age more gracefully by yeah. accident, I feel like. I, I don't know. And, you know, is that what? Letting your hair grow gray? Is that because you don't get Botox? You're considered, oh, you're aging gracefully. But also, what? why do you have to age gracefully? I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means. Yes, gray hair, like these women who have let their hair go gray and uh -huh. they look wonderful. Uh -huh. That's great. I am not going to do that. Uh -huh. I am not ready to go gray. Why? Why would I, you know, or or you know, if a little Botox is going to loosen up these few wrinkles, why uh -huh. wouldn't I do that? Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong with that. So, and then there's the other thing, if I were to completely go gray and let every single wrinkle show, then I would just, people would be like, oh my gosh, she's really let herself go. <laughs> so you have to forget about all that and kind of do what makes you feel good, yeah. you know? But there's much more pressure on you, I would say. I, there is, but like, there is yeah. pressure on all women. There is, but, but especially, wait, So yeah. is it different in Jersey? It is. What? People are different in Jersey than they are in California. Well, in, in many ways, but like, what are you saying specifically? In looks they... wise, like I feel like it's more acceptable in certain places that are not so youth obsessed. I would say I want to tie it to entertainment yes. rather than California. Yes. That's but my. That's where entertainment and is. I know. So what? Right. What is? What? Which one is it? Yeah. But yeah, I would say so because in normal circles, but at the same time. Like almost nobody, everybody you know has gotten Botox. It's yeah. like, that's what I, that's what yeah. I realized now yeah. is like, you don't necessarily know that. So yeah. even, even people in New Jersey who are not in entertainment, right. they're getting Botox now. Yeah. So it's like, everybody's doing it all. It's sure. almost like, yeah, everybody used to dye their hair yeah. and then it's like the same thing really. But why, why do people want to make people feel bad for doing something like right. that? Right. That I, that's what I equate it to. Yeah. I'm like, well, Botox and coloring your hair, it's like, well, it's the same thing. You just yeah. want to have agency over how you look in a certain way so like what's the big deal yeah. but at the same time I get the other thing is like oh we shouldn't encourage everybody because you how are we gonna learn to appreciate aging as it is if everyone's changing their faces but at the same time like in the history of everything a lot of people are exercising eating well all the things to mm -hmm. look better right. because they feel better so like what where do why do we have to draw a line at like okay well it's only if you want to yeah. work out you know, and eat well, that's okay to make yourself look better, right. but how dare you do something? So like, it's really yeah. not, it's a, it's a lose, lose situation. I think, I, I think it's crazy. I think there's nothing wrong with doing what, you know, and I think it's funny because, you know, we take such good care of ourselves and we're all like, no, it has to be organic and we want to cook this and we don't want to eat the, you know, the, the processed food, but yeah, put a little more Botox in here. That's okay. <laughs> right, right. I'm going to pick and choose. 
my poisons, uh -huh, you uh -huh. know? And for me, a martini and a little Botox is my poison. By the way, I love a good martini. I really yes. come to appreciate a martini. <laughs> for a while, I went around looking for my signature drink. I'm like, uh -huh. well, what is my signature drink? Yeah. I was like, in my mid forties, I'm like, I need to have a drink. I yes. don't know what, I just like, I don't really like wine very much. So I need to find myself a drink. So I started sampling all the different drinks and I was trying to go to the classics and it was the martini that was like, well, of course. And so I'm with you on the martini. Another thing we have in common yeah. now. But I'm now doing a gin martini. Ooh. So is that is that a thumbs down for you? No, that's admirable. I'd to like me it's to better. like gin. So to me it's better. I, I just haven't I haven't you don't quite like um, acquired a taste for gin yet. No. Okay, I'm so a vodka I, martini girl. And that's what I was doing for a while. Yeah. And I kind of like one day I was like, why am I not trying a gin martini? Yeah. And I did, and I was like Huh. Another okay, so what do you good. like about it more than a vodka martini? It just tastes better. It, ta it has a nice, it tastes better. Okay, I, I might have to do a gin martini tonight. I would definitely try a gin martini, and I usually have a, a plug, Tanqueray martini. Oh, okay. That's the brand. Classic. Classic. It yeah. is a classic, and I have tried a few different ones that I don't like as much, mm -hmm. but to me, and then I did a little research, mm -hmm. and like that is a classic martini, and it's they recommended, so try that maybe ah, tonight. Okay, I will. And um, with olives, and I used to get a dirty martini with extra olives, and then I started yeah. to realize that I got so thirsty after. This. Yeah, like I salty, have to reduce, right? I have yeah, to reduce I'm like, that. no, I like my martini like I like my men, clean and strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think now clean and strong with a flavor, with a style, a flavor. Yeah, I like that. All right. So, so I'm gonna try it. Yeah, so that is my, why did we bring up martinis anyway? I forget why. <laughs> we're all over the place what were we with talking this conversation. About? It was something about, well, that's, that's how Martinis and Botox, that's my poison. Oh, right, That's okay. how we got to it. Right, so again, <laughs> but that's like, okay, you're choosing your things that you like in life, and that's, I celebrate that. Although I have to tell you, I am, I'm Botox free, as you can see right now, because there's wouldn't... a lot of movement everywhere, but it's because, Here's the other thing. Okay. Botox works great during a certain time. After a while, there's not enough Botox and it gets weird. And that's where I'm at right now. Okay, but I thought really is the yeah. first I'm hearing that. Yeah, because... at least that's my experience. I'm finding that before a little Botox worked great to soften the lines here and there, mm -hmm. but now the lines have gotten deeper and I have more lines, so it takes more Botox and it creates a little bit of a weird look. So I've cut out the Oh, Botox. like a frozen look? Is that what you mean? No, no, where it creates wrinkles in other places. Oh. So if you're gonna smooth out these few wrinkles here, then it's gonna create other wrinkles here, and you're gonna smooth these wrinkles, but it's gonna get weird here because you're just older and you have more wrinkles, more loose skin. Oh, so the loose skin goes in other places, you're saying, because you're still gonna have the same amount of skin. Right. Is so that what you mean? Yes, I think that Botox works great, you know, for preventative. So, like, meaning in your 30s, you do it in the right places. It's going to prevent lines. Right, because that's what they say now. Is yeah. you start younger, and it's a start younger benefit. because it prevents the lines from really set getting deep. And then into your 40s, it's great mm -hmm. because it it really smooths out some of the lines that are already there, even in your early 50s it's still working. You mm -hmm. kick it up a notch a little bit and it's still working. Once you get into your mid and late 50s, it's a different story. I've pulled back on all of that because I didn't like the way it was looking. It wasn't doing the same thing that it was doing before. It just wasn't working well. Okay, but you look so good. Maybe that was the preventative Botox in my 40s. Uh, do you think? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Thank you. No, and I, I, I mean, I remember just being totally honest. I specifically remember when we talked last time, yeah. me being like, you are so beautiful. Oh, I have to God, tell you this. Like, you. it's true. And I don't mean to make you feel awkward, but it's true. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, when I'm time, when I'm ready to go to a dermatologist and do whatever, yeah. I'm going to ask Daisy, yeah. like, what to do. <laughs> so I switched out the little bit of Botox that I was doing for lasers. For lasers. For you told me about lasers, lasers. I yeah, remember. Yeah. For me, I feel like that really, that works better. It works a little bit more from the inside out. Mm. Um, so... Yeah, there's not like that instant lift mm -hmm. that you would get, you know, much younger with a little bit of Botox, but there is a, a, a little bit of a 
uh, an improvement in collagen where I think in the long term it kind of very subtly helps mm. and that's really what it's about you want to do what you can you want to preserve what you can and I, I feel like lasers there are some good lasers like the Ulthera laser it's it's a little painful but it really if you see the science behind it you can see how it works from deep within your skin so lasers also it's like one of these things too like there's a lot of medical technology yeah. that has so many things have gotten better and better and better and it's like well yeah it's like we're using it for yeah. this or for that or for the other thing sure. like yeah why not lasers you know and then they've started combining this Ulthera laser which I've had a couple of times with PRP which is the microneedling uh -huh, right. where they kind of spin your your blood and, and it, it's very uh, scientific it's and very platelet rich plasma is yes, that what it stands for yes uh -huh. and it's, it's but it all works and these are you know the the less invasive things that we can do to kind of feel a little bit better when we look at ourselves in the mirror I know some people don't care some of us care it's all fine yeah yeah it's all okay it's all fine I love that it's all fine whatever you choose yeah. to do that's what you do right that is like if there's a message that's yeah. the message yeah in my opinion. I think so. They just started doing the trees again. It's okay, we're good. I can kind of close yeah. up, wrap up. I don't have a watch. Do you, do you know what time, uh, how long yeah. we've been talking? I don't know. Okay, it's perfect, it's right it's, around an hour. Yeah, it's 1.37. Um, um, okay, but I just interrupted myself, so let me get back to. Uh, I remember, but we can talk about so many things. We're all over the place. That's how it should be. We've got so much to talk about. We do have so much to talk about. Well, okay, so, and when we think of something, when we're like, okay, like what? What else do we want to talk about? Well, I think, do people know about your uh, therapy background? So if some people do, I have, yeah. I started out when I started doing my show, I kind of just, I wanted that to stay in the background Why? because I thought in my experience people when they found out I was a therapist this is just in regular everyday life I think they got worried that I was analyzing them are you I'm not really yeah why because that's just not when I'm inter like I'm talking about friends when I'm interacting with a friend I'm basically just we're just doing our thing right. and I'm there present with them I'm not like outside looking in saying well what's going on for that person really right so I that that's when I was just getting started as a therapist and so I really I learned that people would tell me yeah I'm always worried that you're gonna analyze me so I was like okay that's not good it doesn't help friendships see I'm kind of hoping you're analyzing okay me. so that's where we are now <laughs> now so everything shifted really yes so when I started revealing on my show to people that oh I should tell you and this is how I said it a lot because I really felt like that was the truth I should probably tell you I am a therapist or I was a therapist because I wasn't actively practicing for a while so um, and then they would so their reactions were very different they were oh of course now it makes perfect sense like you're so insightful and now I understand like I had these aha moments or whatever I feel like oh, I owe you money for a therapy session <laughs> so I was like oh so people feel better actually yeah when I am there and I give them feedback so now I will do that Obviously, if you want me to, like I even told you before, we were yeah. taping. I was like, "Oh, I'll give you a little therapy session, yeah. but not as a therapist, Love but as that. like friends." So I feel like that is an advantage now. People like it. So now I'm leaning into that. Yeah. And part of my show now that I do a lot of is now I will give somebody feedback. Like I told you, for example, well, you're observing, but you're also analyzing. I mean, it's not right. like the deepest realization, but but I wouldn't have thought. I you might not have, have thought I of it. So did you Notice appreciate that, that yes. you saw that about in yourself? Yes. So that's why I think people appreciate that. Yes. And I, so I want to give you something like that because I think it is helpful. Like I, I'm all about, hey, go analyze me. I would love to hear an yeah. analysis of myself because right. I don't know what, what it looks like or what it's easy from the outside, especially from somebody who's trained, I guess. But I find it interesting. I realize that like you may find it interesting. So now I offer yeah. it. Do you find that it has helped you with the podcast, with it, with talking to so many different kind of people and, and being, so is it something that you learned or is it that you're naturally curious? Naturally curious and learned, but mostly naturally curious. So I think 
I went into this field because I'm so into people and I'm so curious about what they're, what it's like to be them. Mm -hmm. So everybody interests me. I am like fascinated by everybody because they have their unique set of experiences in life. Mm. And then I also realized that I feel like when people open up to me, they feel good and I feel connected and I love that. So I used to yeah. see myself as more of a, like a, maybe a shyer person, quiet to myself. And now I'm like, oh, I really like people. Yeah. Really like being with the right people, obviously. Yeah, I can't say that I would agree with you and that I really like people uh -huh. because uh -huh. I, I don't always really like people, mm -hmm. um, but I'm always fascinated mm -hmm. by people mm -hmm. and what makes them tick yes. and what made them how they are. Yes. Like even the people who I find annoying, uh -huh. I'm curious what made you annoying. Well, that's the same thing as when you're sitting in the rooms. <laughs> yes. This is exactly what we're talking about. You were doing that then. Yes. That's exactly it. Yes. So that's how that's taught you too. So like. I've learned the things also through experience. So like, yeah, I have my, my degree, my education, my license, all those things, but those aren't necessarily the things that have, they have taught me to a certain degree. Like I have to take my continuing ed classes to stay licensed. And so I am still learning, like I'll, I'll hear something of like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then I'll kind of apply it. But it's through talking to people that has really made me more skilled at like figuring out what's going on. Right. And especially right. when if I will give somebody feedback on something and I'll analyze them a little bit, I'll tell them what I'm seeing, and then they're like, oh yeah, it's an aha moment. Yeah. And I can see it connecting. So that tells me, oh, that probably is a, a, the right connection. That makes sense. Yeah, so that's like positive feedback on, oh, okay, that, that that would make somebody do yeah. this or feel this way or whatever. An exercise that I learned a lot from when I was very young, and this was when I got my first MTV gig. It was okay. MTV Internacional, it was in Spanish. And my executive producer sat with me after, did I tell you this the last time? No, Maybe but I'm seeing another guy coming at your door now. Oh. So, say that, go back to the story though. I shouldn't have interrupted you, sorry. So. So this was an exercise that my executive producer did after our tapings, after the first, gosh, maybe 10 tapings that I did. She would sit with me and she would play back the show. Uh -huh. And she would say, you do this a lot with your hand. Like you do this, don't do that a lot. And do you hear your voice? Maybe we should do um, a, a speech coach. So I remember going with this amazing person, I'm forgetting her name, but she worked with all of the anchors in New York, the national and local, anchor, which is like the number one market. She was working with like Dan Rather, mm -hmm. and I'm talking like Barbara Walters, like big names. And she helped me. So, you know, when you're young, I remember I used to talk like this, and so my voice was up here. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't wanna talk like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's little, and just the fact that I think that I was so it's something that I think a lot of people would dread, and I enjoyed it so much, uh -huh. sitting there with her, like watching myself as if it was somebody else. Right. And learning about, we all have these little tics and mannerisms and habits that if you're able to catch them, you can correct them if you want, uh -huh. or you can keep the ones that make you you, you know? Yes. But it's so important to watch yourself like that as if it wasn't you. Right. With an open mind. Yeah, not everybody can do that. It's kind of like the old fake it till you make it. Yeah. Well, I think you should start acting like the person you want to become. Okay. Yes to that. Yes. Yes to that. And then you become that person. But you can't do that unless you're really aware of who you are and the things that you're doing that you want to change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to reflect and then get some insights on yourself first. Otherwise, you're running away from it. It's like yeah. that book that you were showing me before about the shadows, right? Yes. So it's like you have to, you're, um, I don't remember what the words were. I'm never going to remember it exactly how Carl Jung said them, but. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> something, of, something about the shadow. You will constantly be reacting to your shadows without knowing them your whole life. You will life. constantly continue to be triggered by uh -huh. things unless you realize that that isn't you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's all about that. So my, always as a therapist, I was always into, it was always insight-oriented therapy. Like yes. I wanted to help people see themselves.
And I didn't necessarily know what I was going to see when I would start questioning them and like have them talk about different things. But then it's like, oh, suddenly I would see it, they would see it. And that is the thing. It's all about seeing the things rather than being defensive and shutting down because then you're just destined to be basically living through those things all the time. Right. It's just going to continue and you're not going to grow at all. Absolutely. And I think that these days it's much easier because we all have social media. We Mm -hmm. can all we all video ourselves with our friends, with our family or for social media or whatever. But back before social media, I remember telling my friends when I was in my late twenties and my early thirties, I remember telling them about this exercise that I did with my executive producer where it helped me so much. Mm -hmm. And I said, all you have to do is videotape yourself, leave a camera going and just talk or talk to your Mm -hmm. friend and then analyze it. And nobody would do it. Nobody Nobody ever did it. That's why I say not everybody can do that. There's so much value in that. I know. In watching and observing yourself and learning. But people are afraid to see, uh, afraid to see the things they don't like. And we've immediately, we've been taught to immediately be shy about it. Be like, oh, I don't like looking at myself. And oh, I don't like hearing myself. I don't. Well, you should. You should really want Mm -hmm. to look at yourself. Why wouldn't you want to see how other people see you? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about being self-aware. Yes. and, And there's not enough of that. (laughs) <laughs> that is true. That is absolutely true. I mean, I went through my own exercises of doing that too. I mean, yeah. I was the first person to say, I don't want to hear my own voice on the podcast. That's like just so disturbing. It's like when yeah. you would, when you, but see, you're used to it now because yeah. you've seen yourself and heard yourself so long. I'm there too now. Right. I don't love watching myself on camera on videos yeah. because I'll always go to the things that I don't like. But again, it's I'm constantly learning. It's like, this is one of the things that when I first started doing my show, I would be, this is how I would be like this. Right. Because this to me tells you to relax because right. I'm relaxed. Yeah. But then I would see myself on camera. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> um, you can't be doing that. Exactly. And I suddenly realized exactly. when I would look at t- watch TV that they were sitting like this. Yeah. Like the, anybody on TV with their own show, right. this would be their back yeah. and they would not touch the, even the pillow behind right. them. So and it like, does look better, but there is something about being relaxed, even if it doesn't look so great. Right. I there is something about medium. that. Yeah. It depends on what you're doing. Like if you're an anchor on the news, of course, yes. you're not going to be all slouchy. But if you're doing a podcast and you are comfortable, it's okay. It may not look great. Yeah. But it's okay. And that's something I had to kind of get comfortable with because of the nature of what I was doing was so laid back. Right. That um, I, I had to not worry so much about what it came off as. I just, I just wanted people to see me at ease and, and be comfortable. And I think that's yeah. the difference between like a news anchor and a kid on MTV. You're exactly right. Because a news anchor, you don't feel like they're your friend and you're like yeah. part of the thing. But Again, whereas, read the room. <laughs> read the room. That's right. It all comes back to reading the room. Again, going from Cuba to Spain to the U.S. was yeah. such a gift for you in I think so many so. ways. But like yeah. it all comes, even like these things, yeah, I all think start so. reading the room came from there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about therapy, and in fact, I am, so part of my thing of coming out to California was being an on-set mental health consultant, Ooh. coach available to people on sets, um, mm. helping the production in general, making sure everybody has their mental health intact, ha- making sure that they leave the show with their mental health intact, being a resource so that anybody on set who's dealing with stuff in yeah. their personal life or even on set yeah. can have somebody to talk to separate, you know, that that's private, but it's a resource for them. Brilliant. Do you like it? Well, I think that we've always needed that, but we're just more comfortable with it today. We're mm. more aware of how much we need it. You know, I think everybody needs to find their therapy, whether it's an actual therapist, yeah. whether it's meditation, For me, it is being out in nature. And I know that there are some therapists who will walk and talk talk in nature. And I can see why. It does something to you physically, to do something to you. It releases chemicals Uh that help you understand things better, that help you open up more. And we're spending less and less time in nature these days where I think it's really hurting people. 
Yeah, by the way, that's actually like scientifically, uh, there's a lot of support for that. Absolutely. Not only like moving your body, but doing yeah. it in nature is a double bang for your buck. Oh, yeah. Mood boost. Absolutely. So I think it's really important for everybody to find their therapy, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And I think a good combination of good talk and good physical activity out in nature, whether it's just walking or hiking or whatever it is that rocks your boat, it's, it's been life-changing for me mm -hmm. to realize that, to acknowledge, oh, you know what, I just need to, I, I need to go for a hike. I just need to get outside. The other day we were in here and there was so much going on and I was getting stressed out. There were phone calls and texts and I was like, I just stopped everything and I, I went for a walk. I left everyone and went for a 25 minute walk and came back more centered. There you go. Sometimes See? it's that simple. Yeah, and you know, but again, it's because you know what you need. Yes. So you're looking internally again, yes. and you're saying, what is going on for me? Yes. What do I need? And then you give it to yourself. Yes, and then I thought, I need a martini, but I can't do that right now. I'm going to go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yes. Um, okay, what did we not mention that we should mention before we, before we stop taping? I should ask you about Richard. Richard. How, how is your wonderful marriage and husband going? He's amazing. We just had a little gathering for his 60th birthday. And, um, you know, there you go. He's aging gracefully. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> He's doing it well. But you know, you know he like looks both, great. Yeah, both of you also, like, you're living, you're living life yeah. on your own terms, I think. So he's going and he's on tour. He's doing his performances. Yes. You're going with him when it works for you. Like, yeah. Yeah. when it works for him, like the whole thing, you're picking and choosing at this point. I think his lifestyle is keeping us feeling okay. young because, you know, we travel a lot and the energy that he gets when he's up on stage performing, um, that keeps him young mm -hmm. and our motivation for being fit and for, um, being comfortable with ourselves right now is completely different. At least I know for me, it's completely different than what it was when I was 35 or 40. I wanted to look good. I would exercise to, you know, be the right size, to be able to look good in my clothes. And now my motivation is I want to be able to get up from the floor if I fall. I don't want to break a hip. <laughs> you know, I want to stay mobile. I want to, my, my uh, I, instead of wanting to do like the toughest exercise, like I want to learn mobility. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to be able to have the right, I want to feel young into my old age. I want to feel the freedom because a lot of people, when we get older, you lose that freedom because you've lost, um, functional mm. extra, your ability to just function, you know, like I, I now I'm, I lift weights because I want to put my bag in the overhead mm -hmm. without help because I want to climb stairs with groceries because I want to be able to do all the things. Yeah. And to me, that's real freedom. Yes. Okay. So I just have to say, like, this is, we started talking about Julia Louis Dreyfus's podcast yeah. and we started talking about like inspiring. Like, we need more of this, what you're talking we do. about. We need, we need more. This is what everybody needs yes. to see and hear and be surrounded by. I feel like yeah. if this is a really positive thing and like, and it also reminds me of something we were talking about before, which is like, you can be surrounded by negative people who are just like, uh, life yeah. sucks or whatever. And then, or people who are out there doing things, even yeah. if they're delusional, yeah. they're still doing things in positive or whatever, yeah. excited about things. But this whole conversation and your outlook, I think is really good and healthy and a good it would be good for everybody else to be exposed to oh thank you yeah i well i i i love talking with you but i i do i do think it's important mm. to get the right conversations out there i mean i like being silly and having a laugh as much as anyone mm -hmm. but i also like keeping it real and i like sharing some of the things that i've learned and i want other women to share with me what they've learned i think that that's really what makes life worth living yeah same. Or it helps you live a, an interesting and, and better, a well-lived life. Thank you for this. Thank you, and welcome to Cali, baby. Thank you. Okay, so Daisy Fuentes, that was a real talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Whatever of those topics you were into, cool. I hope you got something out of it. One little note before we go, if you want to see what we were talking about when I was saying that when I first started taping the show, I would be all slumped down in my chair 
and I was demonstrating it. If you want to see me actually doing that and her doing that, you can by watching us on YouTube. Please follow me and subscribe over there on YouTube. If you don't already, it's at youtube.com slash really famous. I've got a lot more talks coming up for you very soon. So uh, please stay tuned. Share the show if you'd like it. And give me a shout on Instagram or Facebook if we haven't already connected. I'm Kara. Thanks for hanging out with Daisy Fuentes and me. Talk to you very soon. I'm having an idea in the moment. I feel like it would be fun to like just do a podcast, you and me, like yeah. a regular podcast on topics. Yeah. Like just whatever would be, hey, what do you want to talk about today? Right. Like what's going on with like, society right now yeah. that we need to, yeah. to kind of hash out. That could be fun. Yeah, that's interesting. And interesting for other people to And maybe to. we could do it with a martini. Yes, like martini real, ra- like, reality like talks. Like Richard and I had tequila talk, oh, and we were doing yeah, a podcast in the pan- during the pandemic. <laughs> With a tequila. That's right. That's right. Because it's just real talk, and it's just, you know, the stuff that we would talk about, and we were having right. a martini. Just... And like people who don't have who don't have a friend to sit down with and talk about this stuff with. Yeah. It's like friends. It's like friends for them. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I always would... love a podcast where I get something but then I want to I'm dying to go and talk to my sister yeah. about it, or talk to Richard about it, and it it, it it sparks other conversations with other people right yeah all right well food for thought yes martini for thought <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense yes. all right so let's wrap up today okay and thank you for this thank you and welcome to Cali baby thank you